And clomiphene, quite effective at enhancing testosterone production without suppressing your body's organic testosterone producing machinery. Personally, I boosted my testosterone all the way to 1,120 nanograms per deciliter with just 6.25 milligrams daily. And I've heard reports of individuals doubling their testosterone at even lower dosages. And it may be smart to stick to these lower dosages. To make sure you evade the estrogen monster. At standard dosages, you better hide under your bed, fretfully clutch your aromatase inhibitor, because the estrogorgon is coming to steal your libido. Everyone seems to be afraid of increased estrogenic activity induced by enclomiphene, to the point where some people are even taking estrogen-blocking supplements concurrently in the hopes of balancing their estrogen. But what if I told you that the negative mood and libido side effects are typically caused by less estrogenic activity, not more? In which case, attempting to solve the problem by lowering your estrogen with an AI is horribly counterproductive. So in this video, we'll discuss how enclomiphene can cause both high estrogen and low estrogen side effects, how I distinguish between the two, and how I would balance my estrogen accordingly. So, CIRMs like enclomiphene, selective estrogen receptor modulators, are somewhat complicated when it comes to their estrogenic activity. They don't just increase estrogen or block estrogen, they actually do both in different parts of the body. They selectively modulate the estrogen receptor. So, they attach to the estrogen receptor, and send varying degrees of estrogenic signals. One option is a null signal, no estrogenic signal at all. In this case, the serum is effectively blocking estrogen because it's competing with estrogen at the receptor while sending no estrogenic signal itself. And at the other end of the spectrum, the serum can attach to the receptor and send a high estrogenic signal similar to actual estrogen. In this case, it effectively serves as an estrogen mimetic. So effectively, there's more estrogen at this specific location. So you have some serms like tamoxifen, which specifically block estrogen in the breast tissue, which is why it's known to have some utility in gynecomastia and breast cancer prevention. So what does enclomiphene do? Well, enclomiphene primarily acts as an estrogen antagonist in the hypothalamus and pituitary. So it blocks estrogen in the brain, which is the mechanism through which enclomiphene enhances testosterone because the brain perceives low estrogen and then compensates by releasing more hormone precursors, stimulating testosterone production and estrogen production. So serum estrogen is actually increased from enclomiphene and also, enclomiphene could act as an estrogen agonist in other areas of the body, like the bones and the liver, although typically this would be considered beneficial by supporting bone density and improving lipid metabolism. But what if enclomiphene acts as an estrogen agonist, effectively increasing estrogen in the adipose tissue? Well, that could lead to enhanced fat storage or in the kidneys, which could enhance sodium retention and lead to increased water weight and bloating. So those would be considered generally unfavorable physical side effects. And individual variability plays a big role here, by the way. So enclomiphene is not going to exert precisely the same estrogenic activity for everyone in every tissue within the body. So people will respond differently. So you can see how this estrogen situation is complex. So enclomiphene is more or less estrogenic in different areas of the body, depending on the individual. And it's important to consider that estrogen in some areas of the body, like the bones, is far more favorable than estrogen in other areas of the body, like the fat tissue. Now, most people who experience side effects, you know, they see the increased estradiol on paper and immediately attribute their side effects to increased estrogen. But I think this is a much rarer case than the alternative, which is when the side effects are the result of reduced estrogenic activity in the brain. And here's why. So it's somewhat difficult to distinguish surplus estrogenic activity from insufficient estrogenic activity because there's so much overlap when it comes to the side effects. So libido issues, mood side effects, brain fog, these can all be caused by both high and low estrogen. But here's the key to decipher this conundrum. So your mood, your cognitive sharpness, your sex drive are almost entirely influenced by the estrogenic activity in your brain as opposed to the estrogenic activity in other areas of the body. 
And it's well established that enclomiphene blocks estrogen in the brain. Okay, that's how it achieves its testosterone boosting functionality. So yes, serum estrogen is increased, but in reference to brain estrogen, the estradiol on paper is misleading because a large proportion of that estrogen isn't bioavailable in the brain because it's competing with enclomiphene at the receptor. On the other hand, usually increased estrogenic activity from enclomiphene is not a significant problem anywhere in the body. This is why you rarely hear of water retention being an enclomiphene problem. This would be a symptom of high estrogen, not low estrogen. So it's much more common that enclomiphene gives you a drier look. Also, gyno from enclomiphene doesn't seem to be a tangible phenomenon, at least based on the scientific literature. Gyno would be considered a high estrogen side effect. So for each of these potential issues, you're going to find at least one or two anecdotal reports discussing how they experienced the side effects. But when we look at the literature, we can see that clomiphene, although the effect was small, actually improved gyno. And then we can speculate that because enclomiphene is the isolated, less estrogenic isomer in clomiphene, that if anything, on average, it would improve gyno. So because high estrogen sides from enclomiphene are relatively rare and low estrogen sides from enclomiphene are relatively common, it does not seem sensical to me to just start supplementing with some sort of estrogen blocking supplement like an aromatase inhibitor when you start experiencing side effects on enclomiphene. Personally, that's not something I would ever do. If I was one of the super rare people who noticed some water retention and some gyno, I still wouldn't take it because, you know, it may alleviate some of the physical issues, but then the psychological issues may arise by reducing estrogen in the brain to an unbalanced degree. So here's my approach. Okay, so I like taking enclomiphene with black ox. So I think this is quite the synergistic combo. Why? Well, first of all, because you can hit your desired testosterone goals at a lower dose of enclomiphene because black ox is increasing testosterone through other mechanisms. So instead of taking, say, 12.5 milligrams of enclomiphene daily, you could take just 6.25 milligrams of enclomiphene and a dose or two of black ox daily. And that will still significantly boost your testosterone with a far better testosterone to side effects ratio for most people, especially because black ox contains estrogen modulators like DIM and indole 3 carbonyl that balance estrogen rather than simply blocking it. So generally in cases of surplus estrogenic activity, these compounds will attenuate it. But in cases of insufficient estrogenic activity, these compounds will actually enhance it. And because of enclomiphene's complicated effects on estrogenic activity, these compounds are far more favorable than risking taking an aromatase inhibitor, in my opinion. So that's the approach I use when it comes to enclomiphene. I take 6.25 milligrams anywhere from daily to every other day with black ox. And I can't imagine ever having a side effect because I haven't yet. But if I did, I would simply decrease the dosage of enclomiphene. I would not try to implement XMS stain or anything like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your enclomiphene experiences in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.